Welcome to center court. We're here at the University of Cincinnati. Now this place is very, very special to me because I had an opportunity to play basketball here under Bob Huggins back in the good old days, you know, 97 through 99, back when I had hair. But there's, there's something real special about this place. And this place has something not a lot of uh, universities can say they have, and that's national championships. If you look over here, you'll see the 1961 and 1962 national championship trophy. Today we're going to interview Sean Kilpatrick and Justin Jackson, two seniors that have been a part of rebuilding this program and bringing it back to dominance. What we hope as Bearcat fans and former players is that we can add something to this trophy case, and that's the 2014 National Championship Trophy. We're going to talk to Sean and Justin about their journey here at the University of Cincinnati, music they like, and just great experiences they've had at the University of Cincinnati. Enjoy the interview. Welcome back to Center Court. I'm your host, Alex Meacham. And like I said before, we're here at the University of Cincinnati. Obviously, this place is very special to me. Played basketball here and went to school here. So I have a lot of passion for the University of Cincinnati, and I have a lot of passion for the University of Cincinnati basketball program. And, you know, I go back to a lot of the games, and I've had a chance to get to know two guys um, that go here and play basketball here, and that's Sean Kilpatrick and Justin Jackson. What's going on, man? Doing, man? Doing well. Right. Doing well. What's up? What's up? Chilling. So, uh, like I was talking to you guys earlier, these guys, because they've had such a great season, um, they're getting interviewed a lot by a diff lot of different media outlets, and you know you've been asked the same questions over and over. So we want to do some different things and ask you some maybe out of the box questions. Um, but before we get to some of that, uh, talk a little bit about um, you know the season. Um, just tell me about maybe something that's been really memorable for you at this point with this season. JJ, we'll start with you. Uh, just the way it's going, and just the way the path is. I mean, just the way our team been going, and just the family, just. The journey is the journey is like there's no words for it. And what you said right there is is key. The journey. So at the Louisville game, that place was packed, right? right? It was rocking. Right. And like I told a lot of the fans, at the beginning of the year, the fans were not coming out like they did for the Louisville game. And what I told a lot of the fans were, it's a journey. Enjoy the process. And it's been really cool to watch you guys, you know, game after game, keep grinding and chipping away, and that eventually led to that Louisville game and. Uh, how was that Louisville game as far as, I know the result, but yeah. the energy? I mean, it was it was amazing. I mean, the f I remember the first whiteout game we was a part of was the Syracuse game. And, I mean, that topped the Syracuse game. Yeah. I mean, that was something that, that was really amazing. And the, the, the fans, I mean, being able to just, like, dribble the ball up the court and really see the, the floor shaking, that was something yeah. that, that really <laughs> amazed me the most. So, I mean, it, it, it was amazing. Let me, let me touch on something you just said, and that's the fans. The fans out there, um, one thing I think you've done a great job with from the time you got here until this point is connecting with the fans and using social media. So how have you, um, you know, consciously made an effort to really connect with the fans? Where does that come from? Because not every player does that. <laughs> I mean, I know that, um, I mean, our fans are six men. I mean, we, we go to school with these people. I mean, they, they, I don't want them to feel as if, as a team, that we're so much bigger than they are. I mean, we're still students as well, and being able to see those those people on a, on a daily basis, I mean, that's something that really plays a huge part. So I just want them to know and understand that their, their work, like when we are playing, doesn't go unnoticed. Right. And then, so, obviously, you're a, you're a fan favorite. And uh, <laughs> how do you feel about the T-shirts? I mean, T-shirts are on I mean, it's no word for it. I mean, I mean like, you, like you just said, they are six men. They feel like we need to help them out by giving them shirts and getting them more energized and getting more into the game like they are in the game. So, I mean, it's a win-win for us. Sure. Now, now before the game sometimes, and even coming out of timeouts, um, I watch so many different parts of the game, and it's funny, like warm-ups or coming out of timeout, I watch you guys sometimes, and the music playing, you know, sometimes, you know, the DJ <laughs> put on, and I see, like, you'll come out of a serious timeout, game could be tied, just get towards the end, and I see you just, like, just rapping along with, who do you like? Who do you listen to? My favorite is right. it's Lil Boosie. <laughs> that's my favorite. He don't like Lil Boosie, <laughs> but that's my favorite. You're from the South. Definitely. Right. So why, why Lil? He's, he's, he's the best. Best ever. 
That's Very that. Jay-Z. That's, that's insulting. <laughs> like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, yeah, we're yeah, gonna we're work, work on, on that. Work. Isn't he? Is he still locked up? He's, yeah, he got this month. <laughs> do, you, do, you have, do you have a free Bushy T-shirt? I yes. think we need your I face. Have plenty of them. Oh, do you? Okay. Plenty. Okay. What about you? Who do you listen to? Jay Z. Yeah, that, that's by oh, far. Man. He's he's the greatest to ever do it. That's in cool. my opinion. So, I mean, being able to hear him on the um, especially after a timeout. That's something that 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 can't go unnoticed. I mean, yeah, he's, he's the greatest. So, I yes. mean, I don't know. When he said Boosie was better than Jay Z, that was insult. And I said, yo, you know what? When it comes to music, you I can't even talk to him. I don't want to hear. You can't talk to him. Yeah, at all. So now, here's one thing I want to talk about. So when I when I played at the university, it was really interesting because there were a lot of great players that played before I got here. Um, and then while I was here. Um, there were some guys that played that, you know, if you were to watch them, Steve Logan and Kenyon Martin, a lot of people didn't know that they would end up the great players they are considered today. <clears throat> Kenyon really grinded, and, and, and Steve Logan just had this, this uh, mental approach to the game that was unbelievable. And when they left here, um, they left here as, just, as, as legends. Um, I think you two have done an excellent job of your growth. And the way you guys are now when you're leaving here, you're leaving, I think, just like um, they did. Not, not, not just, I, I think it's beyond points, too, mm -hmm. obviously, and the energy you bring, like, like Kenyon did. There's, some, there's definitely similarities between right. you guys, but um, I, I think how you've connected with people and all that. Um, so what that leads to my question is, when I sat down and talked with Kenyon recently, I said, Ken, did you come to UC and go, I'm going to leave here the best ever? Jersey's gonna be up there. Did you come in with that mentality? So I want to ask you guys, what was your mentality coming into college? Me personally, I I wanted to be the guy that 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 fit in. I mean, I wanted to be someone that did the little intangibles to help the team win. And I mean, I didn't know that I was gonna be who I am today. I mean, me knowing that it was gonna take a lot of hard work to really get to where I am now, and, and being able to just try to get my team into the to the tournament. I mean, that was something that, that played a huge part, but I never knew it would be the way it is now. What about you? I mean, I, I came in and just wanted to be the best player I can be and just, like he said, get to the tournament every year and just be just be known as a winner. I just wanted everyone to know that I was a winner. And that's my, what my main goal, just to become a winner and have everybody else believe that I was a winner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so prior to the season, you know, started, I think, um, how many votes did did you guys have for the top 25? One, zero. Yeah, about one, zero. one zero. 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 How do you guys, so a lot of people feed off of that in, in different ways. Did you guys really feed off of that or just not listen to it? You say, you know what, we're just going to grind it out. Used to it. Yeah, we're so used to it. I mean, every year they count us out of the top 25. Right. right. But we, I mean, when he, when we brought it up to, um, to coach, he um, said something about it and then we went back and was like, I mean, we're, used, we're so used to basically not being top 25 and then as the season continues to keep growing on, we end up in the middle of it and then the top 10 or it, it'll end up something crazy. Like, I mean, then everyone look at it like, yo, how they get up that far? But, I mean, we're so used to being the underdog, it, it helps us. It puts a chip on our shoulder. Mm -hmm. Definitely. No word for it. I mean, it puts chips on our shoulder. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like a fuel. Like when you like go mm -hmm. to the car, get fuel. I mean, it's, it's it's just something that you build off on. I mean, you already know people counting you out, so they're not really watching you. So now you just grinding out, coming from the underdog, and now you're just trying to beat everybody else that they had in front of you. That's what we've been trying to do. And what what were your other choices out of high school as far as uh, colleges? Oh uh, well, I had Florida, Florida State, Villanova, um, UNLV, a lot of schools. I mean. All type ACC, B12. Like and what was the main reason you picked the University of Cincinnati? My dad played for the Reds, so I'll be kind of familiar with the area, so I'm like, why not? Sure. Shane Cronin was a good guy, and we seen things eye to eye, so it was a win win for me. Yeah. I had, um, I verbally committed to St. John's, and then the other schools were um, Seton Hall, probably. It was really mostly Big East schools, but, um, Choosing this play, I mean, me coming here on my visit, I looked at it like, yo, after I was done, like with the visit, I got on the plane, I texted with Coach Crow, and I was like, yo, this is where I want to come. I don't want to visit oh, nowhere else. Like, this was the first visit, and that was it, so. Cool. So, uh, also, one of the things that, you know, that, that UC has always been, as far as a basketball program, has been 
um, one that I think a lot of kids in the area look towards the players um, as influences, but also a style. I think UC's always been a style-related school. Um, I know you've recently worn those uh, silver shoes. <laughs> yeah, the silver surfers. Right, right. Yeah. So how much does that, that play in, like, like just style? And we were talking about uniforms and all that stuff. I mean, how do you feel mm-hmm. about that? I mean, it, it, feel, it feels good. I mean, knowing that you do also, like, you want to play with comfort on the court, but you also want to play with some type of flashiness towards you. I mean, you can't always be the guy that just looked plain. I mean, it's mm-hmm. different styles towards everything, but especially with our team. Like, you see guys with different haircuts. You see guys right. with different tattoos. I mean, it's something different. And, I mean, I just really wanted to take the shoe game to a different level. Mm-hmm. Got the headband going. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, Leonard Stokes was like the, the headband man right. at, at, at UC before. What's what's up with the headband? Just Well, I used to wear a headband in high school, and I stopped wearing it. I got to college. So, like, my last year, why not? Right. Your stage of rubles is pop. his stuff's off. <laughs> I see yeah. people slip on it yeah, yeah, yeah. on the court. I mean, rubles, rubles, rubles. I mean, I just love the headband. I've always been wearing it, so right. I keep wearing it. It's been working out for me, so hey. Yeah, without a doubt. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit, and I know we're jumping ahead. I want to talk about beyond basketball. So let's not even talk about the NBA. Let's not talk about overseas. Let's talk about life stuff. And one of the things that Kenyon and I had an opportunity to do recently um, when we were eating at dinner, um, we talked about what's the next step because he's towards the end of his career. Mm -hmm. And he has to start thinking about business. He's like, I'm not even 40 yet. And and you've got from 40 to 80, you've got 40 more years. It's like Michael Jordan always said, when I'm done playing, I've got to be involved with so many business opportunities. Um, Have you guys thought about that and thought about when the basketball stops bouncing? What do I want to do? If if not broadcasting, then I want to be a lawyer. I mean, I'm good at debating. I, I like debating and I like um, okay. really like arguing a little bit. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, other than that, if not those two, then I mean... Do you win your arguments with, with, with Coach Oh, Brown? no. no. <laughs> he decided, if he decided to be a lawyer, he'd be a great one. So, <laughs> he I mean, yeah, he, he, he gets us every time. But yeah. if not that, then I would definitely want to be a coach. Definitely. Nice. What about you? Can't see myself leading the game. I'm gonna be a coach. I can't see it. I won't be a coach too. I'm gonna be around basketball till the day I die. I mean, I'm gonna be a coach. If I'm not playing. I'm gonna be around. So I'm gonna be a coach. That's all I really can see myself doing. Mm-hmm. Now, do you, do you have any other uh, hobbies or anything you're uh, really good about that maybe the the people don't know about? Um, I'm great at um imitating people. Yeah, definitely. You oh, really? Like, yeah, I, I can. I can just about me. You got be a be a twin to someone. Yeah. Coach Cronin? Anybody. Definitely. You can do co- have you ever done it before for people? I've done it yeah, I've done it before. Yeah. I've done it before and it, um I mean you would have thought that the same person was in the room but he really wasn't. Really? Like I make him like the perfect example of him impersonations and I mean it's crazy. He's good at it. <laughs> <laughs> so can can you give us something? Is it clean? <laughs> um, can you give us a little bit? Oh, uh, give him the um. You want to Titus? Yeah. Oh, you got Titus? I got everyone. Oh, you can imitate Titus? Yeah, I got okay, everyone. go ahead. Go ahead. Um, you know, what's voice. the what you want the subject to be though? Um. Uh, he's approaching a girl on campus. Oh, that's and, uh, easy. <laughs> that is She's easy. walking across campus. He doesn't know her. Titus rules. How, how you doing, girl? <laughs> <laughs> she, then she'll continue to keep... You don't know my name? <laughs> I'm Titus Rubel, number two on the UC team. <laughs> yeah, so I got, I got it down to a, to a science. His, his voice is like that. <laughs> Just like that. That on. Uh, what, what about you? You have any, uh, um, any no. talents? I'm funny. I can dance a little bit. He's a big time comedian and, and I can dance, got a dance bit, moves just a little bit. Oh yeah, like yeah, what kind of dance moves? moves? Just a uh, nay nay yeah, it's a little nay. anything. Whatever thing that's hip and new, I got it. I can yeah. do it all, baby. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> all right. Let's let's then talk about you know, finishing out the season. Mm-hmm. So we have games left uh, at UConn. Uh, Memphis, Rutgers, mm-hmm. right, and then uh, tournament, uh, 
conference tournament play, right. and then the NCAA. There's still a lot of season left. I think that's what fans miss out. They see, you know, they're, you know, four games left in the regular season. Oh, we're towards the end of the season. It's still long. So that's so one. It's like it's three seasons. I mean, yeah. It's this right. season. Tournament. Then you got a tournament. Then, then you got the championship. NCAA that's the championship. I mean, you, if you lose there, you're not coming back. So that's the championship to me. So there's three seasons. You got to finish one strong, and I got two more to finish strong. Yeah. So I as far as that's concerned, um, um, recently at the Louisville game, I had a chance to talk to one of the CBS guys, Greg Anthony, and we were talking a little bit about the different games he's watched. And he told me that, um, he says, I can see UC being in the Final Four easily. He says, I can see a lot of teams, you know, make a lot of times you got to, you know, you have that luck. Right. Um, have you guys had any dreams about that Final Four uh, championship game and cutting it down the nets, or are you just thinking about each game, game to game? Be honest, too. I had a dream the other night about cutting down the nets. Okay, game. tell me about it. It's funny because we, um, I forgot who we were playing, but we were we were up five, they hit a three, and then we so we equal basically ended up being up two. They hit another three, came down, we, we shot it, we missed, they hit, came down, hit another three. And then, so funny, Jermaine Lawrence hit a buzzer beater, mid-range shot. Really? And that's how it ended. And when the championship. Everybody just rushed the floor. And cut down the nets. Yeah. It, it was pretty good. Because, what about you? I mean, I think about it every day. Every time I step in, every time I come about it, you see it just live by going to Germany, see the final four banners or anything. I mean, I think about it all the time. I mean, that's what I came to college to do. I didn't come to college to be a regular player. Sure. I came to college to be a legend, become, make a name for myself, right down that you can think that you're not going to take away from Cincinnati basketball, that they won that national championship. That's my main goal. So who's, uh, who's somebody that influenced you growing up with the game of basketball? Like, I, I was a big Michael Jordan fan, but then, you know, I'm not, you know, six foot six. <laughs> and um, I really started watching tape of Allen Iverson at Georgetown. I watched him over and over because um, it was so cool to me that somebody his size, and I've met him and he's not that much bigger than me, right. could do the things he could do and the fact that he had that dog in him. Right. And you have to at that size. So who's influenced you and why? Your game. Uh, Charles Barkley and Kevin Garnett. The main two guys I watched when I was a young guy, because just because of Charles Barkley, he was in my dad, in my dad era, and Kevin mm -hmm. Garnett. When I was growing up watching him, so I mean, both of them had the dog and the same mentality I had, like the right. hard nose, and that's how I got my game from, just playing like them. And Kevin Garnett talks a lot on the court, and yeah, he talks a lot too. <laughs> now, here's something that's interesting. I played AAU basketball against Kevin Garnett. Shows you how old I am. Yeah. Kevin Garnett. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant used to rock the bald head. Man, man. He used to shave his head back, play them in AU. A lot of the guys, uh, Steve Nash, all those guys. Man. What about you? Um, well, you know, growing up, every kid wanted to be like Michael Jordan, of course. And um, once I realized that he was about 6'6", six, six, and I was like 6'3 <laughs> six, and a half, six, four, I mean, I kind of, um, I started trying to implement my game from Ray Allen. I mean, knowing that he could shoot and he could mm -hmm. really move without the ball and just really, he had a scoring, like he had an act for scoring, especially when he's on the supersonic. So, I mean, I really watched him a lot. Mm -hmm. At quick release. Yeah, I mean, he, he's, the way he can shoot the ball is, is just impeccable. Like, and I heard recently they was like that he had, um, like he had OCD because like he wants everything to always yeah. be perfect. Right. And I mean, that if you look at his jump shot, I mean, it does look perfect. So, I mean, I give him a lot of credit for that. He's, he's definitely worked at it. Yeah. yeah. So, when you guys um, leave the university and somebody mentions your name or mentions your name, you want something to follow that. You want somebody to say something about you. Mm -hmm. um, what do you want that to be? Hard worker. No, he, he's never stopped working. I mean, he was someone that... Whenever you looked at him, you could tell that he was always hungry just to get more. And, and, um, I mean, that's really something that, I mean, especially with me and him coming in the same era um, in 09. I mean, I mean, what, we was in 2010? Yeah. 2010, I mean, that was something that Coach really built in, in us. Like, you know what, I mean, if you don't work and if you don't continue to keep trying to get better, then 
you're never going to be what you want to be. And, I mean, that's something that me and him talk about still to this day. I mean, it's, it's the little things that really count, but it also goes with the drive that you have within yourself try to get to um to try to get you where you want to go mm-hmm. what about you justin jackson Bro, um, <laughs> just as a, a machine like i've been saying in media i mean as a hard worker and a machine as a, a hard-nosed type of player that never gives up and never gives up on the play and always gonna give the 110 percent the guy that's known as a winner how, how did you and you've probably been asked this a, a bunch of times by the media but how, how did you feel about um, at one point when you were, and probably naturally doing the, the mean face, um, you know, there was those reports, I think I talked to you about it after the game at one time, of people saying stuff about the mean uh-huh. face, like, oh, he's a thug, man, oh, yeah. for, for doing that. Obviously, they don't know you. Right. So, um, and you, you read, though, I mean, you heard about them. And um, what, what were your thoughts on that? Uh, where did the face come from? Um, just natural. Natural, I don't know. Like we talking like I, don't know, I first heard about it was in it was in, where were we? It was in a hotel somewhere, and I showed them on my phone. I'm like, look at this, and they like call me a thug and all what, whatever, whatever. I mean, if you really know me, I'm far from a thug. My parents, sure. my parents are pastors, you know what I'm saying. So I'm a far thing from a thug. And seeing that, it really didn't bother me because I know who I am. And I know what I do. I'm just I just wear my heart on my sleeve. I just got a passion for the game, a love for the game that I can't control. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just wear it on my chest. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. No thug. It's nothing like that. I'm just an animal on the court that can't contain. Yeah. It's funny you said that because, like you say, when you bring up Kevin Garnett, you consider him a thug because he has passion for the game. Mm-hmm. He's, he's the same exact sure. way. So it's like, like you said, like a lot of people don't know him. They don't know what he's been through within his life or he, they don't know what kind of passion he has for the game. So his way of expressing it may be that. It may be like, yo, you want to know what, if I catch a dunk this time, I just want to show, like, my aggression. Like, I, I want to show what, what it is that's going through my mind or what's going through my body. They don't know what he's been through, so how could you say he's a dog? I think, you know, a lot of times the fans don't realize what goes on. They, they, they watch the games, right. but they don't know about the grind you put in at practice. Exactly. <clears throat> you know, the other day when I was at practice, Coach Savino was showing you some stuff on the, the post moves. Right. And you were listening to him. You were talking. And there are a lot of things that you've worked on, you've worked on. And if you put enough time in that and get better, and when it happens for you in the game, there's just joy. Joy. It's happens. like it I've been yelled at for so long about that, and now I've corrected it. So there's that passion, and you got the fans. I was like, people don't understand the emotion right. with, with, with sports. Exactly. So um, one thing I do want to I want to do is. Um, I want to, I guess, from a former player, and we're, we're back at Brothers. Definitely. I want to I wanna pass some, some knowledge on to you. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I've, I've learned this over the years, and that is um, when, when people remember you, and, um, you know, like when you're gone, um, it, it's not about what you have. It's about the people you've impacted. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. So as you go on your journey beyond basketball make sure that you're impacting more people be involved with the community right. um, you know people call you a thug but they don't know after the games you're going out and you're shaking fans and you're taking pictures all the time right. you know you've impacted a young person right. you know your ability to connect with people social media and showing them that you're a positive person you're impacting those so keep doing that because that's what, at the end of the day, my grandmother always says, and I say this quote a lot, um, and she's a hundred some years old, that uh, when she passes away, she says, there, there's not a U-Haul truck right. at a funeral. You can't take all that stuff with you. Mm-hmm. What do you see at the funeral? People. Right. People you've impacted. So keep up what you're doing. Uh, keep impacting people and keep doing great things for the community. I want to appreciate you guys appreciate for, you, right for coming. And you guys, there's the Kilpatrick jersey back there. There's the Jackson jersey. We're missing one. Jalen, can we? Just the old school. <laughs> nice Meet you. Now, yeah. how you say? It's, nice break, it's classic. Right? That's old. So uh, real, real quick, we'll talk about before we taped. Uh, one of my superstitions my last year was uh, not to wash my jersey. So. Um, the, the folks at the time, Scotty, Will Hoyt, and those guys that uh, would manage our stuff, I said, don't wash it. So I got blood on it. 
all the sweat and I just and I didn't play a lot like you guys did <laughs> right, right, so right, it didn't right. it didn't get you know all funky and all that but quickly tell us about some of the superstitions real quick um our superstitions Coke especially yeah <laughs> I mean we we even packed the, the team like yo you know what you got to do this right and that right like if we're on the away game like going to the away game like going to the airport you have to sit in the same exact seat I that you're sitting in the seating arrangement I can yeah. tell you right now all the way in the back me. SK, me, <laughs> G Long, Choi, Day Day, then even down to the managers. Deck, I mean Derek, yeah, Derek. Zach, no, Main Lawrence, <clears throat> Zach, no, Dave <laughs> Lawrence, Zach, Rub, Main, Shaq. Shaq. And this so happens, Main always messes everything up. Jermaine Sanders, switch them too. so we got to switch <laughs> them to every time. So. Like that, this shows though. You know, that, that, that family, that bond you guys are, yeah. are building. That's pretty cool. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on, man. Appreciate it. And I uh, just so want to let everybody out there know that uh, I will be there at the Final Four, and I will be there at the championship game. Definitely. Yes. When they're tearing down the nets, and I think I might have to rush the floor. Yeah, we need that. I'll, I'll, definitely. I'll definitely be there. So I <laughs> uh, want to thank these guys. As you guys can see, um, they're class acts. Uh, very good guys on and off the court. I think that's very important for all of our young kids that watch. So I appreciate you guys tuning in to Center Court, and I look forward to you guys watching more shows. That's the extra medium. <laughs>